Engine. What's wrong with it? Do I look like a mechanic? All right, calm down. Come in and have some breakfast. Oh, I'm not hungry. Is this about that sheep? You know, I can't stop thinking about it. Here I am trying to scratch a living together. Zoe sends up some schoolgirl who promptly kills one of my animals. Oh, come on, Jack. You're not being fair. Paddy was busy. Paddy was somewhere else. I bet you went in all guns blazing yesterday, didn't you? Well, I wasn't in a very good mood. Look, you're only seeing one side of this. I'm going into the post office later. I suggest I drop you off at the vets and you and Zoe sit down and discuss this sensibly, all right? I don't see the point. Come on, Jack. You've known Zoe for a long time. You know it isn't like her. You owe her the chance to explain. <sighs> so I had it go with Zoe. She rolled over like I said she would. No, she went mad. What? Oh, she called me an idiot and made me feel about that big. Well, it's not the brightest thing you've ever done. I know, I feel awful. Oh, come on, lighten up. It's not the end of the world, it's just the end of sheep and um, so you'll come round. Mm. I've got to ring up and get the results of my mocks today as well. Oh, well, that should cheer you up anyway. Maybe you're sailing through GCSEs. I just feel like everything's going wrong at the moment. You know, I had this idea that I'd get really good results and Zoe would give me a really good reference and Hot and Agricultural College would practically beg me to come on be the star student. Oh, stop worrying. Just go into work like nothing's happened. Do you think I should? Look, everything's going to be fine. You'll get decent results because you always do. And I bet you the first thing Zoe does is apologise for losing her temper at you. Hmm. We need some sort of strategy. Do you want coffee? Yes, please. Thanks. Right, Jack's not the type to hold a grudge, so just let him cool off and do a bit of grovelling. I don't want to talk about this. I don't think we've got much choice, so if we handle this wrongly, it could really hurt us. How long have you been a partner? About three months. Three months. And you think you've got the right to tell me how to run this practice? No, but... I'm very well aware of the situation, and I'm going to deal with it. I'll uh, take the schedule out to Pete. Laura, I'm sorry I didn't want to talk things through last night. Well, I, uh, I did spring things on you a bit. Took me by surprise. Did it really, though? You must have had some idea of what was going on. I'm afraid I'm not very good at picking up the signals. Well, maybe I'm not very good at transmitting them. This has come as a bit of a surprise to me, too. I noticed I liked being with you, and it grew from there. No, I like being with you. You mean a lot to me. I don't want you to humour me. I mean it. Well then, don't you miss having someone close to you? Someone you care about? I've been alone for a long time. I don't really think about it. Well, maybe you should. Zoe said the same last week. Said how guarded I was all the time. Well, it's not a sign of weakness, Chris, to let that guard down a bit. Why not admit you're lonely and you need someone? I know. I know you're right. Look, I'm not going to pressure you. You'll have to make the next move. Hello, you all right? What are you doing? Just checking if you've got a new aftershave. Hey. Eh? Well, something's changed. Kelly's taken an interest in you for the first time ever. Yeah, well, I'm a nice guy, aren't I? I don't know what she sees in you. What's your problem? I don't want you taking advantage of my sister. Yeah, well, there's no danger of that. Good. Let's give it that way, shall we? Thank you. So? One E and two fails. Ah. Oh, my life's falling apart. <laughs> Oh, it's not. I've made a mess of my exams and a mess of my job. Right, listen. As far as the exams go, there were only mocks and you'll do better when the time comes. And as far as the job goes, I'm sure we can put that problem behind us. We're, we're all to blame, Lynn. Zoe's a very fair person and a really good employer. She'll come round. What are you doing here? What do you mean? Surely you realise you've been sacked. What? So you better go. 
Look, I've worked really hard for you. You did an adequate job. What do you want, a medal? You made a stupid mistake that could have cost me my reputation. Zoe, I think you've been a bit hard on her. Stay out of this. Lynn, just go. No. I want to have my say. Now, just keep your temper, Jack, all right? All right. It's always been a very smoothly run, well-organised practice. Things like that don't change overnight. Yeah, all right. See you later. Just go. Zoe, calm. Will you da shut up, Daddy? I'm handling this. I was only at the Sugdens because you were too hungover to drag yourself out of bed. Came to talk to you, Zoe. Yes. Sarah okay. said I should be reasonable, so I came to talk to you. Yeah, let's talk. And I find you screaming at your partner and your receptionist calling you a drunk. No, just wait a minute. I'm sacking the girl who's responsible for what happened. No, she's not. I'm resigning. I had no idea things were this bad. Jack, look, we're talking about one aberration. I don't want to hear it! Well, if you're not going to listen, how do you expect me to explain? I don't know what's happened to you, Zoe. You want to take a look at yourself? No, Jack, oh, oh. Nice customer care, Zoe. So she's going, oh, I'm going to foul my rocks. Well, maybe she is. No way! She's just a worry, I mean, she's even scared of Zoe. Or perhaps she's got good reason to be. Look, I know Lynn. Thought to find you here. So? So he sacked me. What? <sighs> that job really mattered to me. Still, it was only temporary, wouldn't it? I mean, you can get something else. And I fail my marks. Okay, I'll leave you two to it. Well, never mind. It's not like they count. You're not being much help. Well, should I get you something to eat? I think I'd rather be on my own. Hey, Lynn, what's the story? Top of the class again. Oh, leave me alone, will you? What's up with her? Well, why don't you ask Kelly? She reckons she knows Lynn. I, I can't get my head around this. Are you seriously considering getting back with Chris? What do you think? Well, I think I've got to go back to school soon. There's no way we can discuss this in a lunchtime. I know. Thanks for coming round. Uh... I just had to talk to someone. Look, Kathy, Chris is bound to be sympathetic with you while you're convalescing, but it doesn't mean to say that he's Mr. Right. I know you and Biff and lots of other people have been there for me, but there's something extra with Chris, that history we share, it makes a difference. So he's been spending a lot of time with you? Doing you favours, commenting on how you look? Yes. Kathy, the reason that he's been nice to you is because he wants you back. Oh, Rachel, is that so bad? <laughs> Oh, all right, all right, so we're clear about how he feels, but what about you? What would you get out of having him back? Look, I know about his temper. I know he could win medals for bearing grudges, but he's got a good side, too. <laughs> Hang on a minute, we haven't finished on the bad side yet. What about the bitterness, the deviousness, the, the, the selfishness? Well, maybe that's down to insecurity. He's a vulnerable man. Kim knew that, and you must have seen it, too. I'm not convinced. <sighs> Kim's out of his life now. He's got a new business starting. I think... I think it could be moving into a whole new phase. Oh, all right, all right. Bottom line, do you still fancy him? Fancy him? What do you think I am, a teenager? Yes, I like being with him. I, I find him an attractive man. <laughs> Sounds like a no to me. You've got a good thing going with Graham, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, it's I... nice to feel that someone loves you, isn't it? Look, Kathy, I just want what's best for you. Like you said, Chris has made his feelings pretty clear. It's now up to me to make my mind up. That to be reasonable. I've listened to you once. I gave her a chance. I've come to apologise. I shouldn't have had to see that argument this morning. <laughs> Bet you wish I hadn't. But Lynn's gone now and uh, things can get back to normal. So you're apologising for that scene this morning? That's what I said. Oh, what about my sheep? Did that slip your mind? I'm sorry that happened, but I've sat Glyn. Surely we can start again with a clean slate. Oh, I suppose there's no point in bearing a grudge. Of course, if you hadn't made it sound so urgent, she'd have waited for Paddy. 
What? Right, let's keep things in proportion. Anyway, I've, uh, I've brought this as a peace offering. Can we put it all behind us? You're not taking any responsibility at all, are you? You blame Lynn, you blame me. You haven't made any kind of apology for your own behaviour. Come on, Jack, what do you want? Blood! Well, I certainly don't want any of your token gestures. Look, I've been under a lot of pressure... Oh, you don't know what pressure is with your family fortune in the bank. I'm not playing at this, Zoe. This is my livelihood. Oh, spare me the sob story. This superior attitude of yours has always got on my nerves. Perhaps you'd better leave. A bottle of wine's worth more than one of your sheep. You're just looking for an excuse to get rid of me, aren't you? You got some better deal from a vet in Hotton. I wouldn't set foot in your surgery again if you were working for free. Now get off my land! Jack. No, it's all right, I'm going. I don't need you. Here! Don't forget this. You know, it might not just be me you lose, Zoe. Seems to me you can't be trusted anymore. I don't need to listen to your pompous advice. Frankly, it'll be a pleasure to lose your business. I know you want to know what my feelings are. I didn't say anything. You didn't have to. But you are good for me, Laura, I know that. You don't let me get away with anything. All right. We've established that you like having me around. We've established that you get lonely. Could we move this on a little, please? I don't think we can. Not yet, anyway. It's just there's a lot going on in my life at the moment. You know, I think I see through you. Oh? You're just like all men. I'd say you're a bit scared of commitment. Maybe so, but you're talking about major change. All I ask is that you give me some time. This isn't a brush off. No, it isn't. Because if the answer's no, I'd rather you just came right out and said so. I will tell you one thing, Laura. I will be completely honest with you, all right? That's all I ask. Boy, you got a minute? Yeah, I just want to finish this. I've got a favour to ask and um, I've got an apology. OK. I'm sorry I've been giving you so much stress lately. Oh, it's all right, I can handle it. Well, you've listened to me going on and dealt with my moods. I don't know anyone else would be as patient as you. I'm just trying to be there for you. What's your favour? I want to learn to drive. You teach me? All right, no problem. Is that OK? Yeah, of course it is. We'll uh, start tomorrow if you want. Mm. I suppose I'll be rubbish. Ah, oh, you boy, it's a cinch. Oh, don't deserve you. OK, you'd have to be grateful. I look out for you because uh, I care about you. Oh, you're a sweetheart. <laughs> I don't know what's happened to her. She just developed this wild temper lately. Women are unpredictable. It's a law of nature. Yeah, this is different. The way she blew up at Lynn is just not the Zoe I know. Oh, maybe it's something to do with the way Kim treated her. She came out of that looking pretty foolish. Well, I'm sure that's part of it, but there's more to it. I just hope she's managed to sort things out with Jack this afternoon. What do you have? Um, I don't want to get you in trouble with Al. I'm in charge around here, Terry, and as far as I'm concerned, you're more than welcome in the wool pack. Oh, that's uh, very decent of you. I'll have a pint of lager. So you, uh... Settling in all right. I uh, think I'm making my presence felt. Yeah, well, I'd step carefully if I were you. How do you mean? Well, let's just say that uh, Al can be a bit overprotective when it comes to his granddaughter. Hmm. I'm getting vibrations, Terry. Sorry? I'm very sensitive to these things. Is there a story you want to share with me? No, uh, not really. Well, don't worry about me. I'm perfectly capable of handling awkward staff. Firm but fair, that's me. Sorry, can I get you a drink? No, I just came to have a word. How did it go with Jack? We need a meeting tomorrow morning to decide on our next move. Uh, well, uh, look, get, let me get you a drink. I'm sure Graham will excuse us and we can sit down and talk about it now. I don't want to talk about it now. Mm, didn't go very well, did it? 
Well, maybe later tonight then. We live together, Zoya. We don't have to arrange a formal meeting. Are you having trouble understanding me? Quarter to nine in the surgery tomorrow morning. You see what I mean? Yeah, four o'clock. Okay. Thanks. Bye bye. Out. Hi. I've just come to apologise for snapping at you earlier. I'm. I'm really sorry about your results. I mean, do you want to talk about it? Not really. I don't need the, they were only your mocks and you'll do better in the summer routine. I've already had it off Paddy and Kelly. Come and sit down. OK, so I'll skip the lecture, right? You're going to have to work a damn sight harder in future. That's it, OK? So, uh, what about the Zoe thing? Oh, I don't really want to talk about that either. I just don't understand why she's been like this. I mean, I know I did make a mistake, but I was only trying to cover for her. Trying to do her and Paddy a favour. Sure, out of order, right? You're well shot of her. I know, but she shouldn't be able to get away with it. Well, I mean, you said what you thought, but there's no else you can do, is there? Mm. You were always such a good listener. Maybe I'm turning over a new leaf. Any chance of you doing some work around here, Marlon? We're a bit stretched. All right, we'll be okay. Yeah, I feel a bit better. I should get off. Well, it's a ruin your mood, but I think you missed the last bus. Oh, I can't afford a cab. Oh, it's no problem. Have another drink here, right, and then come back and stop at mine. And this is your new leaf, is it? What? Well, you reckon if you listen to my troubles for ten minutes, you can get me into bed with you? OK, I didn't mean it like that, right? I was going to stop on a sofa. Really? I'm just trying to do a friend a favour, that's all. Th think of it as an all-in package, you know? A hot chocolate, sympathetic ear, oh, and a roof for the night. I see. What do you say? Thanks, I'm sorry. Sorry, and thank you. My pleasure. There you go. Cheers. You get quite a range of men in here, don't you? Why'd you ask? I like the idea of teachers and vets. Clever men with a bit of money in the bank. But when it comes down to it, it's more the physical type I go for. You know, strong men who work with their hands. Maybe you should try Jack Sugden. He works with his hands. Jack's not really my type. I don't think I want to know. What do you think of Terry, though? How did you find him when he worked here? We got on all right. Only I picked up a hint of romance the first time I stayed in the village. Anything that might have happened between me and Terry is none of your business. All right. The problem is, Tricia, when you dress like you do, with the tight tops, you might find you're tempting the older man. Is that right? And you're very slightly obvious with the flirtation. I mean, I know you're barely out of your teens, so self-discipline is a foreign concept, but still. Well, I'm sure Mandy could do with some advice, too. All in good time. I'll serve Terry. I can't just sit here and pretend he's not there, can I? Sometimes it's best to let things cool off. I'm going to have to have a word. It's in two months. <laughs> well, I've had my little chat with Tricia. Mandy's going to be my real project, though. Oh, yeah? You see, you just have to let them know where they stand. They're grateful, really, when you're strict, because they know where the boundaries are. I've read that in Five Steps to Good Management. Right. Uh, so what have you got in mind for Mandy? Well, she's colourful, which is good. But she doesn't really dress to suit her frame. The larger woman benefits from looser clothes. More of a drape effect, don't you think? Well, I couldn't really say. Oh, well, that's what I'm going to tell her. Oh, yeah, right. Um, are you going to do that tonight? Only I'd like to be here when you do it. No, I'm going to give it some thought. I think Mandy needs the subtle approach. I'm good at subtle. <laughs> I wondered if you'd dare speak to me. Jack, um, it's got well at our van, doesn't it? Do you know this can all be resolved with a bit of good-tempered discussion? You know, the thing you're missing is that Zoe is incapable of good-tempered discussion. She completely lost the plot. Can I tell her that at least you're willing to talk? She's made it perfectly clear that she's got nothing sensible to say now. Will you leave me to me pint in peace? Well, what can I tell her? You can tell her! If she wants a fight, she can have one. What do you think of women drivers? My ability. I knew you'd say that. It says here they have less accidents than men. If you can learn it to drive. Roy says it's a cinch. Oh, Roy does, does he? You've seen too much of him. He's a mate, and he's going to be my driving instructor. You shouldn't encourage him. What are you talking about? 
You know what I mean. I, I don't want him hassling you. Who said anything about being hassled? He could be sitting next to you for an hour at a time and I don't really think he'd be able to keep his hands to himself, do you? Oh, listen to yourself, Scott. You sound like a jealous boyfriend. No. I'm just saying that I could have taught you to drive. I thought you were saying I should stay away from Roy. No. Just... you never done anything I've asked you to in your life. Roy's reliable and he's a good friend. In fact, he's just the kind of guy I need in my life right now. Yes. Yes, fine. Finding it difficult to concentrate at the moment. I keep thinking about our conversation. Well, I'm sure. Well, there's an easy way to make us both feel a lot better. Have you made up your mind? No, Chris, I haven't. Um, you know, I'm very, very flattered by what you've said, but it's just... I don't like the sound of that. to give me time to think it over. You know how I feel about you, don't you? Let's not. Kathy, I love you. I want to make things right this time. I'm going to have to think about this. I'll see you tomorrow, all right? I'll give you my answer then. Kathy? All right? Y yes. Yes, that'll be fine. Chris, are you OK? Uh, t t tomorrow, then. Yes, I'm fine. Uh, come on. Thought you'd gone home. Oh, forgot these. Didn't expect to find you still working. I oh, was just trying to tie up a couple of things. I'm still thinking about what you said. Just think it'd be silly to rush into this. You've been saying that all day. I'm just trying to be straight with you. Okay. Who was on the phone? Nothing. Uh, nobody. Just a deal I'm trying to set up. Well, tell me. I might be able to help. All right. I've got two clients that I might be able to do business with, but I can only accept one. Oh, surely you can take on both. They're competitors. Uh, easy. Go for the better option and let the other one down gently, in case you can use them in the future. Someone's going to get hurt. Can't be helped. Business is business. Yeah, I know. I know you're right. My instincts are to be ruthless in these matters. Well, maybe you can put the deal off for a while. I won't have to. It should all be resolved tomorrow. <laughs> 